Yeah. Hoxton Radio has come up the West End today to be with... Rob Fink, founder of Big Drop Brewing. And... Nick Dudson, creator, director of The Choir of Man. And you guys are working collaboratively on this project, which sees the show set in a bar where the actors are actually allowed a little drink on stage in this one, aren't they? Uh, the show I... takes place in a pub, and so the actors are drinking throughout the show. Uh, however, they are drinking non-alcoholic beer because uh, <laughs> we can't have them drinking alcoholic beer for, the, for their job. That wouldn't be good for their health or the health of the audience. They don't want to do a, an Ian McKellen. No, they don't it, want to do... As it's called now. Yeah, just dropping off the front <laughs> of the stage. So we partnered with Big Drop uh, and the guys drink Big Drop um, throughout their performance and throughout their contract. And then the audience can also sample it and they can buy it in the lobby as well. And the audience are invited onto stage to have a few beers in this bar as well. That's right. So when the doors to the theatre open, we also open the pub, as it were. So the audience are allowed to come up on stage. They can hang out. They can have a drink. And about 15 minutes before the show starts, the actors start to come on stage. And they're just chatting, having fun with the audience. And then the show starts whilst the audience are on stage. And we gently usher them back to their seats. Mm -hmm. And whose idea was it to then put Big Drop in these taps? Uh, Nick tells me that they came to us, which is lovely and very flattering. Uh, I, they were looking for a, a, a non-alcoholic beer that the cast would actually enjoy drinking uh, rather than some other brands which are available which may not be quite as enjoyable as, mm. as Big Drop. Uh, yeah, so they came to us and asked if we could help them. We said yes. I, I was already a customer of Big Drop. So I um, was going through... I was trying lots of different... Uh, different types of non-alcoholic beer. I think people call it sober curious. Mm -hmm. So I was spending a bit of time just trying lots of different uh, alcoholic beers and I got a mixer uh, box from an online non-alcoholic beer provider and Big Drop was my favourite. And so when we were looking at different brands, I said we definitely have to talk to Big Drop simply because I like the taste of it. And uh, happily the partnership worked out. There we have it. And when did Big Drop set up? What's the story behind you and the crew? Uh, so we started way back, and it is now does feel like way back in 2016. Um, I was just saying to Nick, I had a previous life as a, a, the very sexy stand, sounding career of a, an insurance litigator. Yeah. Um, and then one day, uh, as, as if by magic, we had our first son, my wife and I, and I stopped drinking for about, uh, I don't think I drank for about 10 months after he was born because babies and alcohol... Just it's not a match made in heaven. Um, and I came to the conclusion that there weren't any great tasting alcohol free beers. There were some lagers around which were okay, that was fine, but actually, really, what I wanted was the pale ales that Nick drank and stouts and IPAs. And so the, the, the goal of Big Drop was to make you know, great tasting beer that happened to be alcohol free in a, in a range of, of different styles. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a lot of talk about how Gen Z or Gen Z drive this sort of sober curious movement and how a third of all 18 to 24 year olds are teetotal. I read a statistic the other day that of all the students going to university, something like half of them now are saying that they want to complete their university career without drinking alcohol. Which, you know, I went to university in 1999 and the idea that you would... I can't even remember university, do you know what I mean? But... It's not for me, the Big Drop thing isn't, they're very welcome to drink Big Drop and many of them do, but it is for me, it's sort of ticking that box for people, you get to a certain point in life, you still want a beer, you still want to have fun, you still want to see your mates and you want to go to the pub, but you just don't necessarily want to mix alcohol into that particular social scene or, or, uh, or journey. How are theatre audiences kind of changing their drinking habits or are, are, are they? Are, are they looking for more you know, zero, 0.5 or low alcohol drinks? Because you don't have to get sloshed when you come to the theatre. It's quite a nice experience to go and watch some art. You don't need to drink. If you're an 18-year-old going clubbing and trying to meet other people, then alcohol might be a bit more needed. But in the theatre, mm -hmm. you're kind of just sitting and enjoying. I, I think the theatre audiences are much like the rest of the, of the general public, so there is a bigger interest in non-alcoholic non offerings. There is something nice, I mean, in particular this show, which is about pubs, um, but more so it's about the community. We, we have placed it in a pub because that is a familiar setting, but it's about the community that's in the pub. But to your question about, you know, theatre audiences, it's about the same as the general public. They like to have a drink in their hand, but it doesn't necessarily have to make them feel drunk. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why, you know, we have this, this offering. And, and we, we talk about in the show, we talk a lot about, like, you know, to quote it, 
it's, this, it's about so much more than the beer. It's about the community and about being together. And that, that's another synergy between Big Drop and, and Choir of Man. Um, you know, it's not about the alcohol, it's about the being together. What's Choir of Man about? Choir of Man is the story of nine guys who meet in a pub every week to sing in a pub choir. You know, some pubs have a football team, some have a darts team. This pub has a choir and always has. So it's about those nine individual guys and it's about their relationship. Uh, and we talk about different themes, particularly touching on male mental health. Uh, and saying, so, you know, sometimes it's five pints and forget about it. And sometimes it's a cup of tea and a talk. And both are valid. And this is a place for both of them. So it's all about camaraderie and how those guys support each other and about their individual journeys and about the songs they sing. And the songs they sing, it's yep. got a pretty epic soundtrack, this theatre show. It does. So we decided quite early on in the, in the journey of the show that we wanted to choose songs that people recognise. That's quite an easy entry point into the show. Um, but also songs that had a particular story. Um, so, for example, we sing a song that almost everybody knows, which is the Pina Colada song, actually called Escape. Everybody knows, if you love Pina, you know, they don't all know that. But if you actually listen to the lyrics, it's a really interesting story about a man and a woman who have fallen out of love, and they both separately put ads in the paper describing exactly what they want, and they go on this blind date without, without telling their partner, and, really, and it's each other. Uh, and so it's a really nice story. And so every song we had, we also sing Hello by Adele, which has got a really interesting story. It's, it's about rejection. It's about, you know, I tried to make it all better, but it, I can't make it all better. So we have all these different songs, and they all have to tell a story, and then we relate them to the characters. And is there anything in it about alcohol? How we're maybe drowning our sorrows, or how we're maybe like, using alcohol for the pros and cons of it? Is that addressed at all in this show? In a, in a light touch way, we talk about what the pub means. And we do, and we do sort of say, you know, as I said, it's, it's about so much more than beer, it's about, about the coming together. And we talk about what the pub means to a community. It's a, it's a gathering place. And we, and, and we do... We also address a little bit about the dark side of alcohol. We sing, um, and we do that through the song Chandelier by, by Sia, you know. I'm gonna swing from the chandelier. And it's all actually about the dark side of drinking. So we do address it and we do, we do look at it. How are beers like yours helping pubs to sort of, you know, keep a fresh audience as if youngsters at uni are now going out and being sober curious, but they still want to go to the pub and now there's amazing beers there to drink. How are you helping the industry? I think Nick's absolutely right. And for me, it's the, the pub, <clears throat> you know, has had to evolve over the last, say, 20 or 30 years to get to a point now where it is a, you know, it's a community hub. Mm -hmm. I, I, was, I was in the pub last night with my two boys doing, their, well, I wasn't doing their homework, they were doing their homework while their sister was at Brownies. And we were able to do that because that pub is a friendly, welcoming place. It's, it, 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 no, I don't walk in and, you know, the piano stops playing and everybody looks at me. And to do that, you have to be able to offer, I think, people good quality drinks other than those containing alcohol. So Big Drop, for me, is just part of a pub's portfolio of that offering so that you can, you can go in and enjoy that pint of alcohol-free beer w without it feeling weird. And, and actually, one of the... So my, my business partner, my co-founder, he does all the design and the graphics and social media stuff. When we first started, the very, very first thing I said to him was, right, your first job is to come up with a name. What are we going to call this beer? And I said, my only criteria for you is that I have to be able to walk into a pub and ask for a pint of it and not sound like an idiot. Because I think there are some brands, not all, but some brands kind of really play on the abstinence or the maybe holier than thou kind of thing. And the brand name is, you know, virtue signaling is a phrase I'm looking for didn't no 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 we go into a pub a pint of Carlsberg a pint of Big Drop and a pint of Guinness nobody has had to say alcohol free in in that exchange with with the bar person and so for me going right back to the beginning how are we helping pubs it's like well yeah we're just offering a great tasting beer that you can drink with your mates in a social setting, in a pub, and nobody needs to worry about whether they're drinking alcohol or not. It's entirely irrelevant to the, the conversation, the dialogue, and the business transaction.